be themselves because they, they're strong on both sides of the football. But Smokey's got to come out of here wide open. We are glad football is back here in Kenton, and we're ready for Bojangles Friday Night Rivals. There is nothing quite like a Friday night in a place affectionately known for generations as Milltown. We welcome you to Canton. Pisgah getting ready to host Smoky Mountain Mustangs. Black Bears just moments away. The hiss, the whistle indicating that we are ready to roll. There is the old mill whistle. Well, you talk about the effort, the ingenuity, as well as, Kenny, the passion for this place that it took to think about bringing that whistle over and marrying it together with what football history has been here at Pisgah, truly something special. Let's dive right in here. Our keys to tonight's game. Here are Kenny's Spartanburg Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram keys to the game. Walk well, us through them, Kenny. I really think Smokey needs to jump out as quick as they can to take his crowd out of it. And if Pisgah on the other side, they want to bring him into it as much as possible. But Pisgah's strong on both sides of the football, and they just need to do what they've done at the start of the season. But uh, Smokey needs to keep it away from them if they can. It's going to be interesting to see if that happens tonight. We are ready for football between these two. Before we get there, let's take just a moment to underscore. It is hard to put into words what the sound of that whistle means to this community and how much of the resurgence of this community through so much adversity is evidenced by what we heard just prior to kickoff. It is a joy to be right here calling this football game at this place on this night. I got a few goosebumps. Right? Well, more than a few when that thing went off. So there's there a few stories about how it got here, and uh, it's interesting how it got here. Not a bad birthday present. No, no, here we no. go. We got high school football. The return man set up at the 10. He's across the 20 and trying to give him something to cheer about here on the home side and doing so is Reynolds, Braden Reynolds down the far side, and he's up near midfield at the 49. He heard the whistle, and at the sound of it, he has his team solidly at midfield and in great position to get things started. Here's the return of Braden Reynolds, and Kenny, this is the kind of return you hope for when you get the football first. Yeah, I'm surprised they kicked it to him. I don't believe I'd, have, I'd put that somewhere to the side, pushed it somewhere, and put it straight to him. Well, let's talk about the quarterback position. You know, it's always critical here at Pisgah, and you see young Mr. Aaron Clark leading this group out onto the field as we speak. You said young, and he's had a good year under his belt last year, and uh, and so uh, now he's got a better surrounding cast on him, and, uh, you know, they're going to everybody already bounced back from a, a surprisingly tough season last year. 
now in his junior campaign as he leads this group to the first play from scrimmage. We should mention Smoky Mountain won the toss, deferred. That's the reason Pisgah received the football first. And we are underway, awaiting again that first snap of the night. Here it is. Clark looking near side, trying to connect with Reynolds, who wants to be an even bigger part of the open he stages. That and he hangs with it, acrobatic <laughs> person, as he makes the catch. How about the hang with him play? You just saw from Braden Reynolds. I was there. Stay with it. Stay with it. And he didn't let it. He, look at that eyes. He, he, his eyes never left that ball. Hands, feet, just about every extremity that exists, and then it ends up resting right on his chest for one of the more impressive catches we've seen on Friday Night Rivals this year, or any year for that matter. And with two impact moments from Braden Reynolds, Pisgah in business at just outside the red zone. That's a Setting dandy up, start. Setting up at the 23. How about the two moments for that young that's man already? For him, that's a dandy start. They swing it out far side to one of the captains. There is Davis who's going to bring it in for a first down. And that will be a red zone opportunity. The first bank red zone put into effect right away by the Black Bears and their march on this opening drive. Here's Smoky Mountain defensively, Kenny, as they try to tighten up in the shadow of their goal line. Well, they've got a, their outside linebacker wins ECU commit, and uh, they're probably going to try to keep it away from his side as much as possible. Whoops, that Playmakers ain't good. exist. This may help, but wisely just diving on it right on top of that bear ball, even if it's going to be a major loss of yardage, it is not the disaster it could have been, as it will remain with the Black Bears. Here's another look at the difficulty on the snap. Yeah, that's exactly what they, you know, they just – Hurt themselves. It's sure it's not anything Smoky Mountain has done. Worked right off of that left shoulder pad, it seems. And again, I'll say it. You have to give Clark credit. He worked his way back there on that bear paw and just fell right on top of it to make sure that further disaster was not on the horizon. Ticking toward 10 minutes remaining. Opening drive for the Black Bears of Pisgah. And now just outside of that first bank red zone. Going to keep it on the ground. This is given to Landon Pope, whose name we call for the first time. Landon Pope, a talented 10th grader in this offensive grouping. I like to see offenses in high school. They get one dimension. So all these quarterbacks get out here, and they thought I'm going to get to college, and they, they've never taken a snap under center. But these high school teams that can do both, get under center and be in the gun, I think it's a big advantage. So far, I've seen both out of Pisgah. Third down coming. And again, markers removed because at one point, this group was knocking on the door. This is for the end zone and able to go up and pull it out Picked of the out. sky for Smokey. An interception that will change the tone of the early stages of this contest comes from Jace Stillwell. And boy, what a moment Stillwell provides. They needed that. And we said they didn't get the start that they wanted, as we discussed in one of the keys. But that was one of the things we talked about. Take the crowd out of it as much as they can. And not a play like this will do it. So now that they get to go turn around and see what they can do offensively. But that's a huge spot just – for Pisgah to go ahead and score would have made it a little bit tough for them to start their drive. Well, the difficult snap followed by the big-time defensive play from Stillwell, and just like that, Smoky Mountain turns aside Pisgah's first chance. And here all of a sudden come the Mustangs out across the 20 to the 25-yard line. Kenny, we have been wondering all day what we're going to see offensively from Smoky Mountain there. You see Aiden Johnson, who is at the helm of things right now for this Smoky Mountain group. The question is, you know the playmakers are there for Smoky Mountain. The question is, how do they get the football into the hands of those playmakers tonight? Well, that's one way to do it. Now, it's good to see. You don't see this much in high school anymore, an eye formation out of it. That's uh, I always thought that was, I like that because it keeps teams balanced. They've got the honor. Like they're trading the tight end there. They've got the honor. You know where they're lining up a lot better. Give off. Good lick. Running into too many black jerseys. Enough bodies there to stay the progress of the ball carrier. And here comes third down. Well, you don't know when you'll see it or how you'll see it. As you see the exchange here 
and then uh, just a, a tackle to, to come flying in there and sweep his legs out from under it by Carter Browning, who did a nice job there. Here's a look at Smoky Mountain offensively. You know, we asked when the question was raised, how will this group move the football tonight? Coach Ricky Brindley, and he just kind of looked at you and I both and winked as if to say there is something up the sleeve offensively for Smoky Mountain. Yeah, I, th I don't think we're going to see it real quick. Lots of teams will show it early, but you know, they've got the – the Williams kid is an ECU commit. You see him right there, but it's hard. I don't care. How, I don't care if you're going to Notre Dame. If you don't, if you can't block somebody coming off the edge, it's not going to make any difference. That's Carter Browning again. Second time we call his name in the early going. Carter Browning making his presence known on that defensive line grouping for the Pisgah Black Bears. He had over 100 tackles last season, and he's working his way there once more. A couple of them on the opening drive for Pisgah. Both of them of consequence as they were in the backfield. And the return man, Jake Lowry, the junior, is standing back at uh, his own 45. He comes charging up, and he is tackled. Enough of a collision that the helmet rests on that Pisgah logo. But the most important thing to Black Bears faithful, he held on to the football. Jake Lowry preventing that uh, punt from keeping it on his side. It will be Pisgah slightly in Smoky Mountain territory when you return to Canton after the break. Bojangles is a proud sponsor of Friday Night Rivals. It's not just football season, it's tailgate season. Head to Bojangles and order your tailgate box today. And tailgate like a legend. It's bow time. Great plays on both ends of this punt. First coming up and keeping it from being a lot more on the yardage side. Jake Lowry makes a nice play, but he lost his helmet, Kenny. Big lick that left his helmet cradled on that Pisgah logo. Yeah, but Lincoln... Let me tell you, he knew that somebody was coming. He still stood in there and caught that ball. And just catching the football saves that team 15, 15 valuable yards once it hits. And that's that's hard to, you know, 10 yards for your first down. That's just, And now he's got him in good field position just by making the catch. Now a team that looked as if they were poised to score on the opening drive but turned aside by an interception in the end zone from Jay Stilwell. Now goes back to work. And not much room to work with, among others in there to partner on the stop is Asaya Bird, one of the seniors on the Smoky Mountain defensive side of things. Now, I asked you earlier, Kenny, as we were walking around today, you know there are talented playmakers on both sides of the ball for Smoky Mountain, but what's the key element for their success tonight? Well, so far, when they've when – Pisgah tried to run the football. They've stopped them. They've stopped the running game. And as soon as I say it, they game, but they're still stopping it. But throwing the football, it looks like they're having a lot more success. But Brett's got to, he's got to run it to set up those passes. I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of the Brett Chapel I saw that I coached against it when he was at East Henderson. He's running a lot of stuff that I wonder why he hadn't been running it more because he was very successful at East with it, and I'm, I'm glad to see him do it. But, you know, Smokey would be in the game a lot better if they controlled it and make, make them have to throw the football. And running it with a great deal of confidence. Yes. Here's a third down play. Going to be third down in about seven and nowhere to run, although there may have been a little contact with the face mask as Bird was trying to wrestle – the ball carrier down. Let's see how they sort this out. You'll get another good close look at it right here. Yeah. Yep. One of the things Brett used to run at East was his wing tee. He'd had about 
five or six plays at wing T, and then he went in the gun. And you had to prepare for both. Well, that right there is an old wing T uh, counter through there that where you pull the tight end. Uh, a lot of people don't do that. They got guard and tackle when you run a counter. And that's one thing about when you pull the tight end. He's got a lot longer to go. And it showed right then that, that you know, of course, they got the penalty out of it, but it takes him longer to get over there. Well, and a key moment right there, Kenny, because think on this. That was going to be fourth down coming. Oh, yeah. If he had wrapped him up yeah. any other way than with the face mask. Instead, the ball remains with Pisgah, and the drive continues now at the 35-yard line. So a uh, huge penalty and, and maybe the first miscue of the day on the Smoky Mountain side of things. Looking for some room to seem through the traffic is Reynolds, and down to the 30 is about what's there. But that uh, is the kind of yardage you'll take on first down all night long. Yeah, but I'm saying Smoky running, running base. I'm saying the kids – I can tell they've been well coached. Just they're they're in position, they're making plays because this is what they're taking blocks on and stuff. So just watching them there because you know Piss is coming off the ball well, and these are two well coached football teams. And Lincoln Sutton has come out a couple of times and been able to seal things off. Number four wearing that white jersey that had been on the near side. It's going to be kept right on that hash and running forward on the right hash down to around the 27 yard line where. A third and manageable is coming. So third down coming in pursuit of what will be the Henderson Family Dental first down chance. Yeah, this it's going to be third. They're going to call it a one. It's a long one they need to get to the 25 and move the chain. There's your wing T right there. Yep, formation you were calling for. Needing There's one. The belly. Yep. Keep it. I love going. that play. Right under. Love the belly. To Landon Pope. <laughs> Order it up. This is one of those asking you shall receive moments. This is the first time. <laughs> he ran the trap right before then, and it set it sets up that belly play a lot. One more look at it, boy. You're right in the thick of things. Well, oh, you got a good fullback. He's pulling guards with the the belly and the trap. You can do. I mean. I, I was always scared of the trap. I think in my first life I was trapped as like a some animal with a with an animal trap. So I was scared to death of the trap. Yeah, it was bringing coach. some kind of flashback yeah, back from your early something. days. Uh, I was scared to death life, of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a first down. A Hendersonville family dental first down is in effect at the 22-yard line. And this is going to be a good for a handful down around the 15-yard line. And we... Close in on 320 or so remaining. Take a look at the bit of a seam that was there for Braden Reynolds, who's been busiest guy in the yard so far on the Pisgah side of things. And just after the Hendersonville family dental first down in search of another, they've now worked once more back into the First Bank red zone. First Bank, 21 locations around Western North Carolina and the upstate to serve you. And proud sponsors of tonight's red zone opportunities. Bouncing out of trouble is Reynolds. He's still up, and he's inside the 10-yard line. So that will be another Hendersonville family dental first down. It's the last one available to Pisgah on this drive, as it'll now be first and goal. That's just good blocking and right there as far as because Smokey was in good position. The defensive end is supposed to keep his butt square to the line of scrimmage to where if the guard kicks him out, and, it, and then the running back good pops outside. He's in position to take it, but he turned his tail to the sideline, and he, that makes the running back able to pop it to the outside. And you saw how effectively they were able to execute the door open for them there. And Pisgah, as a result, with a first and goal at the 222 mark opening period. No score. Pisgah threatened earlier, but an interception in the end zone by Jay Stilwell turned the Black Bears aside on that occasion. It's going to be kept by Clark, but he has ran backward to the 10. And it's going to be second down goal from there. And then the defensive player did a good job there, keeping his butt square the line of scrimmage to exactly what we just talked about when the quarterback went to pop it outside. See how I think that the outside linebacker came up, and that's exactly what his job is to do, turn things inside. If he plays, if he stays square, then the running back who pops out there is right in his arms. I said, I'm seeing two well-coached football teams uh, technique-wise. That's the one theme the that emerges right away, and it? Yes. Both these teams know what they're supposed to be doing, and this is going to be stacked up just the other side of the left hash, right at the 10-yard line. And all of a sudden, here is a Mustangs team that has stiffened 
and is on the verge of turning Pisgah away once more, Kenny. Yeah, and that's said, Dave. Yeah, even though the Bears have been getting some, you know, three or four yard gains or things like that, it, Smokey's right there. Um, I'm seeing a lot of different unbalanced. That's unbalanced right there. No, it's not. That's a, that's a gun a slot. Got a man in motion coming near side. That was Ballou, and he'll keep trying to sweep to the outside, but he meets nothing but white jerseys at around the six-yard line, and Smoky Mountain will have nothing of this. Inside the final minute of the period, fourth down and goal coming, and you hear my partner. He's counting them. I, there again, I'm going to brag on. There's nine players over there around that football. And it sounded like all nine hit the ball carrier at once. Big licks at the five. That's how it should be done. Fourth down goal. What's at your disposal here, Kenny? Uh, I'm just thinking Brett might take the – unless he's got something that I live, I'm thinking he might take the, the three points. Well, what it looks like he's going to take is the rest of the quarter. Think decide. about it. They're going to talk yeah. it over in between the first and second periods. The consequential play will begin the second quarter as a fourth and goal will be there for the taking. When you return to Canton, Pisca knocking on the door in a scoreless contest on Friday Night Rivals. Not to quit. Don't let game night dinner get you stressed. Stop by Ingles for great choices from the Ingles Deli. Rotisserie chicken, fresh made salads, a delicious hot bar and sub bar. It's dinner and a snap, then off to the game. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. A third down stop on the final play of the first quarter for Smoky Mountain that has set up a Pisgah fourth and goal from the five-yard line to open the second period, looking for the first moment of impact in this contest. Pisgah decided to let the final seconds run off the first quarter game clock so they could make sure they had the play they wanted, a play that Pisgah hopes will be the tone setter of the football game. Here is fourth and goal for the Black Bears. A lot of room out here to this sideline. They threw an out pattern the last time all the way over, which is hard to do. Clark, after assessing the situation, walks right up. Trying to draw them off. Attempted to get movement on that front line of the Smoky Mountain D. We're gonna go it back was and not it to again. be. 
And flags do fly, but we'll see if, in fact, nope, it's going to be a delay Field goal. against Pisgah. So they were simply trying to see could yeah. they draw them off, and they're going to take the three points, it would seem here, Kenny. Brett's, Brett ain't been around the block uh, just once now. He's been around it a bunch of times, so he's got a lot of stuff. And like I said, I've seen – when he was at East Henderson, we, me and him had some good battles, and we got to be really good friends and allies. Well, he's opting to go for the field goal here. Clark gives way to Fox as Walker Fox, the senior, is going to try to kick from the right hash what will be a 27-yard try. And he's got the leg for it and puts it right between the uprights. Walker the Fox with the first three points of the night and Pisgah. On their second drive, out front by a trio. Here's one more look at the 27-yarder from Fox. A 27-yard field goal from Fox, and after Walker Fox took care of business for Pisgah, Black Bears enjoy the first lead of the night. To the delight of a packed house here in Canton, just what you would expect it to be. You know the football history of this place in Milltown. A couple of early chances in the first and now early second period to get the job done. This the only scoring on this night as you get one more look at Walker Fox and the true stroke of that right foot from the far side hash on the 27 yarder. Pleased with at least points off that drive as Pisgah's now set to kick it away. But you gotta be pleased also to some degree, Kenny, if you're Smoky Mountain. Once they got the interception in the end zone with Pisgah knocking on the door and here they limit the home team to three. Hey, that's what I was looking for earlier with the pooch. Yep. Right gonna be handled at the there. 30 up to the 33 yard line and that's where they'll take over. But to that point, Smoky Mountain has to be pleased. Two times they have What's the old adage? Bent, but they have not mm -hmm. to this point broken just the three points. Let's give one more look at the, the return, the job done by Lincoln Sutton, whose name we've called more than once tonight to avoid disaster. They set up shop at the 35. Because, you know, for Pisgah, to some degree, there has to be the sense that uh, there was a chance for a whole lot more through a period. Plus. Yeah, and I know the disappointment out there. And I, I think when, Mace, when Pisgah comes back out, depending on his drive, they go back to throwing the football. This is a just, they're running twins. There's the old, there's that trap I told you. Uh, and there's Aiden Johnson again as he carries it across the 40 up to the 43. I'll say it one more time. That's the kind of first down guardage you'll take all night long. Good work done by Aiden Johnson. This is mountain football right here. You know I mean, how I many last time anybody went to game or looked on TV or looked, and you saw two teams under center and some, or a team running the I formation with twins. Yeah, that's how it used to be. There used to be you went out of the wing tee and the team went to high formation. That was just transformed there. So that was the new offense. But just warms the heart. I huh? like it. Warms the heart. Here's a give up the middle and right onto that logo one more time. Falls Aiden Johnson. Johnson, uh, the 11th grader, doing a good bit of the heavy lifting here for Smoky Mountain as we close in on the 11-minute mark. And he's got a first down. That's going to be the initial Mills River Family Dental first down of the night. As he's provided a fresh set, boy, that ball could not be placed more squarely between the hash and on that Pisgah Black Bears logo, so familiar to Western North Carolina football fans. That's where Smoky Mountain will snap it. Here's the give off to the left side, and a host of bodies in there 
to stand things up after a gain of a couple. What do you see from Smoky Mountain so far offensively? They're stabbing that fullback. If you establish that fullback, it, all of a sudden you've got to do things to take it fullback away. Yes. You, you do digs. I saw right then they blitzed uh, right in there to put pressure on that after they stopped it. Uh, usually after somebody pops that fullback a couple times, then you try to go outside some. But now they go back to the gun. and uh, I like to see versatility out of a team like that, be able to do both. Talk about versatility. How about the athletic ability that is shown by Damari Williams here? Williams bounces outside and hurdles to some degree one tackler as he gets near the 40, and that's going to be good enough for another Mills River Family Dental first down. Move the chains one more time for Smoky Mountain. As I said, you establish that fullback up the gut. Defense coordinators get to know, I got to stop that. I got to stop that up. Then you put pack it in on the inside, then you can pop it outside. Williams is an ECU commit. Going to be down there. Coach Houston from the mountains. Keeper. Back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe that is about all for the ball carrier, Jarek Jones, the 11th grade quarterback, is actually not going to get back there. He's going to be second down at about 12 when all is said and done where they spot him down. 9-15, ticking downward. Second period. Boy, possessions are going to be limited tonight, it would seem, Kenny, that's for both why, of these teams. That's why one reason why Brett kicked the field goal right there. He, and Smokey's pit kicker's not bad either. Well, Lopez, not a bad kicker on that front. You're right. And you've got a scoring opportunity. Take it. Coming near side to the 40. Let's see where they give the forward progress. That's back near the original line of scrimmage. But it's going to be third down and a little less than 10. You know, Smokey's doing something. Lots of times you get a team that runs the football a lot. Offense coordinator, you'll catch them. And I've actually charted coaches before run the ball to their sideline 95, 96% of the time. And I called my defense because of that. Spot of trend. Uh, right now, Smokey hasn't been doing that tendency. Haven't been giving you any tendency no. right now. Nope. Hard to know what's coming. Well, they answered the whistle at the start of this game. You just heard the bells. Tolling for third down and just shy of 10 needed. The 31 yard line, what Smoky Mountain will need for the Mustangs to move the chains. Right up the gut, all kind of room. He's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down, but boy, did he click off a chunk of yardage with that carry. Talking about Jarek Jones, who found another gear up in the heart of things. I'll tell you what happened there is you got to see your guard and tackle guards pulling and so that just told right there the offensive coordinator picked up that they that they're reading once they go to the gun they're reading the guards the tackle you did that sometimes when you get in the eye formation the linebackers are to read that's how i always did read, read the fullback because he, he either got the ball or he took you to the play but in the gun and it's like they're reading the lineman here comes fourth down gonna be fourth and a long three mustang offense staying on the field They'll try to work a seam far side, and it didn't look to be enough room. As again on the carry was Jones, but he is turned back big short. That big stop. And that is uh, the first real defensive stand just inside their territory by Pisgah. I believe I'd put go to a Wildcat type foot if I was going to do that, put the Williams at the quarterback spot. All kind of options coming.
Well, you know why they're smiling. This is the place to be tonight in Western North Carolina. Good one so far. Three nothing contest as we give you a glance at the Asheville smile. There's some more grinning. Family dentistry smile camp. And the reason the home team smiling, a field goal in the early stages of this second quarter, which has provided a three nothing lead. And there's one more look at our Asheville Smiles. I was trying to see what that guy was wearing with that medallion around his neck. Smile cam. Well, you know, they come out decorated to some degree on a night like this. And the question, who's going to leave highly decorated? It was interesting, Kenny. This matchup, Black Mountain News, Citizen Times, Hendersonville Times News, News Record, and Sentinel all getting together and providing the preview this year. And this was the first game listed early in the season on the 15th among those that were in that must-see category mm -hmm. in this part of the state. And uh, easy to see why. Possession's going to be limited tonight. Football going to be in vintage form, as you talked about tonight. And the scoreboard close to this point at 3 nothing Pisgah as the Black Bears go back to work after a stand on fourth down to take it away from Smoky Mountain. And that's right in the interior of that Smoky Mountain defense. Mustangs were waiting, so second down and eight coming. You know, Piz can go down and score on this, score a touchdown. From what I've seen, it's, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Smokey to have to uh, try to answer back. You know, it's quite obvious that they can't throw the football. And at the start of the year, they could because their quarterback transferred to Tuscola, Tuscola a week before the start of the season. And it made it tough on, on them to be practicing and throwing and doing stuff all season and then all of a sudden have to change what they do and a little trickery here and now finding a man wide open as he gets the trip and it's Reynolds down the far side Braden Reynolds as they execute it perfectly to the delight of the home faithful uh, it's Coach Chapel and changed the lick yeah, like I said if we, I faced him 18, 19 years ago. That's what he – he's always come up with something like that. And then establishing the run, running the football, it lulls them to sleep, lulls them to sleep, and you find the shot. You're supposed to – right there, that part of the field, you're supposed to take that shot if you can. Our first United Federal Credit Union touchdown of the night, and it is one uh, of impressive fashion. He saw the trickery on the front side of it, and it was all Reynolds. On the backside as he carried it home for the first six of the night. It becomes seven after this catch. The extra point true by Walker Fox. And it is a 10 nothing Pisgah advantage second period. Friday Night Rivals is brought to you in part by Carolina Furniture Concepts. Over $5 million of furniture in stock, ready to deliver to you. Visit their Arden and Waynesville showrooms or go to carolinafurnitureconcepts.com. We got to get good field position. All that. right, Kenny, what a moment for Pisgah, the Black Bears. Drawing it up to perfection, that's one thing. Executing it to perfection as well as the first touchdown of the night one worth seeing again and we'll show it to you on the backside of this kickoff the ensuing kickoff coming with now a 10 nothing lead 
in effect. Uh, I look forward to having you break this one down for us in a yeah. moment after Walker Fox kicks it away. One thing you know, he's been consequential to the game. An early field goal by Walker Fox. He was true on the extra point just a moment ago. And now the senior kicker is set to put a foot into it. His team up by 10 at the 620 mark. And we are back at it. Look at that strong leg backing all the way up to the two-yard line for the return is Williams. And Williams finds a little room near the Bear Paul at the 25. He's to the 30 and will be to the 33-yard line. All right, Kenny, here it is. How was this drawn up by the Pisgah coaching staff? Well, I know it's back out of the backfield. And what all that, the running the football, running, if you're setting that field up, you see right there, he came out of the, he's the one that handed it off on the reverse. So there's nobody to cover him once he comes out. So the man to man on that side, and once the wing came around to take that pitch, then that's what that DB was covering. Once he went in motion and there was nobody there. A back, a linebacker has the only person that could pick him up unless they just sit there in the zone. That's ends, the up only being, thing. ends up being Clark to Reynolds. That's something they're yeah. very familiar with here in these parts. But uh, there was a lot of activity prior to that and in between. Well done by Pisgah for the 10 nothing lead. And before the initial snap of this drive for Smoky Mountain, uh, it is a delay infraction that will back the Mustangs up just a little bit. And we just spoke. It was going to be – Make it awful tough on Smokey if Pisga can score a touchdown right there on that drive. And that play there, you've set that up. You've set it up. You've set it up. And uh, you really hope it works because you know it's going to you know it's going to be there. You see it. You run plays before it to see how they're covered. Well, it was wide open spaces on the far side in the area where Reynolds occupied. This is across the 30 to the 32. You know, I mentioned this game came in highly regarded when you looked at some of those that were circled on the schedule in the September 15th time slot. This was the one, and Kenny, in that Mountain 7 grouping that were previewed, Wes Henderson at Smoky Mountain on the 29th, Franklin Pisgah on the 29th, Pisgah Tuscola, of course, you always circle that one, mm -hmm. on October 13th, and then Franklin, Wes Henderson, October 20th. That's the way they line things up in terms of must-see contests from this region of the state, from this classification. And uh, we're seeing why tonight some highlight moments between these two and a big lick on the end of this. Boy, after weaving through some traffic for positive yards, Jones was met just shy of the 40. Kenyon Moore. Well, Moore is waiting. He is reading. That's textbook. And the only thing I want to know at the end of this is how in the world did Jarek Jones hold on to the football? <laughs> because he was, once he spun around, he was right there. That's what a safety's supposed to do. And, and most of the time, safety's in uh, high school. You, you know, as DB, you're, as a coach, you're yelling, back up, back up. You know, you're, you're not called safety for nothing. You're the last one there, and most of your tackles, don't, you don't get to have a tackle like this lots of times. You're just trying to make the play. Well, he had a moment there. Timeout being called for as Smoky Mountain, if anything, going to give Jones just a chance, who showed his toughness, staying right in there, but to catch his breath for a moment ahead of the third down play. Boy, as big a lick as you will see, delivered in timely fashion by Kenyon Moore. That'll be one of the things you will no doubt see as a part of the halftime highlights package, and that, of course, is a part of the Asheville Chevy Show. Coming up at the half, you'll want to stick around. Well, we ran into the Asheville Chevy boys underneath tonight, right, before things started. Of course, Stan and Bobby, always a big part of things for uh, the Asheville Chevy group and the Asheville Chevy show at the half featuring highlight stats and a whole lot more coming up for you here on Friday Night Rivals. You know, they've done a lot to support these all these kids in Western North Carolina uh, with what we do. And, um, you know, it's good to see people that stick with you like that year in year out yeah important the, the work they do to create opportunities to, to highlight these young men big hits like you just saw from Kenyon Moore impressive runs that uh, created the stage like the one we saw from Jones and he's still right back at it he's going to turn give off this time there's Williams running to the far side and he's still striving for every inch he can secure up across the 40 but uh, it's going to be a fourth down and about three that's another big stop. And, it, you know, what you want after a score, 
after a score, we used to get both stickers on the back of our helmets, three and out after a score. Uh, the deep, everybody on the defense got one because it, now you've, you've scored. Now you're getting the ball back with decent field position. Jake Lowry rushing back to become the return man. This time he'll fair catch it. Won't field it cleanly. It's still <laughs> rolling around just inside the 10. It will be Lowry in the end who gathers it up, but not without a little adventure. They'll take over at uh, what they're going to call the eight-yard line. So that's where Pisgah will go on its latest drive. This had a little bit of drama to it, Kenny. Yeah, he's third bouncing that thing like a basketball. Lowry, who made a great play coming up and snatching the football away earlier. He took a big look. A couple of big hits in, in this game we've already seen. But uh, here, had to really not panic and somehow find a way to maintain possession of the football. Here comes Pisgah as a result. Clark showed his arm strength on that last play, huh? He did very much. And, uh, and on the other end, Smokey's quarterback, just he, he has no arm strength. Not his game, right? Mm -mm. We've seen no. what he can do with the wheels. Very impressive in that department. But it's um, a night in which Smoky Mountain called upon right here to keep things where they are. Now, keep in mind, Smokey won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. So if they can avoid anything further from Pisgah on any kind of long march by the Black Bears here across the last 334, Smokey would be in a position to try to take a bite out of the lead as they will have the first touch of the third quarter. Yeah, and that, I keep waiting. They have a Rambo. Two formations, uh, you know, twins in the eye formation, and then in the gun, really the same thing. They're just in the gun. You take a look at the, the coaching impact of the head man at Smoky Mountain, boy, two guys that you just have a great deal of respect for. You know, six years in, think about his background here in this part of Western North Carolina. And he was talking about, you know, you were talking about the streeter days and back before things were consolidated and, you know, everybody rolling down memory lane. He was talking about watching some of those old films on the reel-to-reel -reel of some of the heroes that used to be a part of these rivalries in this part of the state. It was a very interesting conversation, and it speaks to his nod and his understanding of the history of the sport in these parts. Yeah, because he played at Pisgah, and uh, he found some of those. And Babe Howell was coaching with a streeter Streeter Brothers playing for Silver Webster. Rushed uh, Reynolds out, using him as a decoy this time to keep things right up the middle. One thing there, too, you look at that. that there's that trap play I talked about. Everybody's scared of once it pops. But uh, what I'm watching there, as far as Pisgah, too, their backs carry out their, their fakes from there. When a coach is grading Great the point. film, he – looks and sees a plus or a minus and if they don't carry out the fakes and they get a minus on that play it was Reynolds the decoy carrying it out well of course it was Landon Pope who was the ball carrier up the heart Clark with a fake he tries to get his man in behind the defense and did but it is just in and out of the grasp of his intended target Davis the senior it looked like number one reached out and grabbed that receiver right before that ball got there. Right before the receiver reaches out right there. See him reach out? He got about grabbed hold of that white tail hanging out. It looks like, yep. I don't worry about no, that up. Ended up having that flag come down. And it's going to be a movement of the chains when all is said and done, as they do as you walked the fans at home through it, Kenny. I didn't see the official stand over there throw that, and I kept looking for him to throw it. Well, they, Somebody else they saw that on their side. They did assess the infraction when all was said and done, and after this penalty. Clark and this group set up with another Mills River Family Dental first down, and there's a big hit. Reynolds, the receiving end of a big lick this time, and that is going to be Joe Hill who comes in there with a head of steam for Smoky Mountain. As you can see, Smoky is not afraid. That they're in good position except for uh, a couple, you know, two or three pass plays. Well, really four at the start of the game and then the, the one out of the backfield, which was hard to cover anyway. And I should mention, Kenny, 
take a look at number one underneath there. Stillwell actually comes in here as the ones in your program, the ones in your heart meet on this occasion. That was Jay Stillwell who had the interception, you'll remember, in the end zone early in the contest who actually came up and underneath the jersey of Joe Hill. Made the big hit. Clark looking for some room, and he'll find just a little bit of space to up around the 34-yard line. And he'll now need just a little bit more to move the chains. You know, Coach Chapel, very, he's fine with picking up, you know, being third and ones all the way down the field. It, it, it's they, and with, he's going to take another shot. And I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I don't think he will here. But, uh, but here is I'd one of those. tight. One of those third and ones that you referenced, and they'll just get in behind those big bodies up front and secure the first down. That's another Mills River Family Dental first down carry, and Clark hands the football off as they will reset the chains. Somewhere depending on, could be right here. Who on which side's calling timeout? Pisgah. Pisgah taking the timeout with just under a minute to play in the opening half. I don't know is uh, how many timeouts Smoky Mountain got left. How many timeouts Smoky Mountain got left? One? First one? That's Pisgah's first taking a timeout okay. there, actually. Pisgah taking their first, and both teams both teams have one. We are confirming have taken just the one timeout. So two remaining on each side. 56 seconds, Kenny. That's yeah. an eternity for these two right now. Yeah, but, you know, it's what I'm saying with the Smoky just having one timeout. Uh Pizzic can afford to take a shot right here on first down if they wanted to because they could run out the clock and go on in. But I don't think they'll do anything that underneath that will might, if it's picked off, they can go, you know, go the other way. So it'll be, it would be something deep to where if it was picked off, I believe that, you know, they couldn't be harder for them to run it back. Take a look, look at, at that. the crowd here at Pisgah Memorial Stadium tonight. Boy, find better vistas and views than you get in the daylight hours here and a more passionate fan base than is on display once the the lights come on and darkness settles in over this community this football rich community here's the first down play at the 56 second mark just for clarity's sake both teams with a couple of timeouts remaining at this point so that was well Steve, covered. Timeout remaining on both sides. Smokey, got to really, if you're Smokey, focus in on not letting anybody break loose yeah, right here. Yeah, that's right. And look at that, they, that formation. They've got they've got three on two out here as far as that. If there's any opening, it's right there because they've drug everybody out of the box. So Smokey only has five people on the interior, and uh, uh, but then so does so does Pisgah. But if you put hat on hat, you drug out, you drug everybody out to the sideline. You look at the middle of the field, there's nothing there. Well, and that's the reason Reynolds took off right up the middle of the field, and on that left hash is where the ball rests after he gets across the 45. Clark looking skyward. He'll now tuck this and run it right across that 50-yard line and sliding down at the 47 with 5.8 to play. Timeout again taken by the Black Bears. That's a good job, Kachon. I know he probably like maybe that field goal kicker if they could get closer, but they don't have enough time, I don't believe, to get one off. And Well, they're out of timeout, so that'd be down the sideline. So uh, probably look for him just be satisfied and run out the clock. Sometimes I get daggone greedy and you'd be controlling the game and just want to go for the juggler. And, you know, put another score up there. I said, you know, we get one more score right before the half. We've really taken this game over. And then so, something would happen, and they would pick it off or somehow score. And now it's gotten close. And uh, you guys, sometimes it's good to be satisfied. <laughs> Walk us through the thought process as you see the most recent play that at least takes Pisgah on to the Smoky Mountain side of the field. Walk us through how you weigh the options between what's available to you on a roll of the dice and what you don't want to see happen, as you said, on the flip side of that coin, what goes into the decision-making process? And I don't know whether he, you know, lots of times 
they're, they're backed up right now. If you have a back that's uh, like number one that, that's back there, that and once they loosen up, like I can remember scoring on a draw play right here because they're all backed up. And Bip, once he broke that second level, he could make some moves. See what they go with here. This may be the final play of the like half. This. Here you go. Can he weave through only down to around the 27-yard line? Time expires, and that's the half. So the one score from a touchdown standpoint tonight for Pisgah and the early field goal, and it'll be a 10-0 lead for the Black Bears. They were reading your mind, Kenny, thinking about trying to just find some open real estate. How many can you make miss on a journey toward the end zone? This one only good for a handful. And time runs out on the first half. Your impressions of what we saw here in the first half, Kenny? Yeah. Old time mountain football is what you got out here right now. You got two good defenses, and you got two teams that want to establish the uh, fullback when they're in the eye formation and then get more to their uh, speed people when, once they get to the gun a little bit. Pisk has got the advantage because they can throw the football. But it's quite obvious. Smokey can. 27-yard field goal from Walker Fox. And in that play that involved a little bit of trickery on the front side, Aaron Clark, the junior quarterback, with a 66-yard strike in the end to Braden Reynolds for the touchdown. And that three and those seven, a 10 nothing lead. It adds up to, for the Black Bears of Pisgah, the Black Bear Band working their way out onto the field, getting ready to entertain the fans here at Pisgah. At halftime, before that begins, let's go ahead and check in with Nelson, who's standing by with a happy head coach for Pisgah thus far. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Jason. This is the Coach's Quarter, brought to you by Carolina Furniture Contest. Well, Coach, I know it was a spectacular second quarter, particularly. You guys got on the board first. You struck hard. You struck fast. One field goal, one touchdown. The momentum is clearly on your side, both on the field and obviously in the stands as well. What were your thoughts on the first half, Coach? You know, big thing for us, I thought we missed the opportunity early. You know, we got down there and got no points. Kind of got down there again. Defense had a good stop. Didn't get any points. You know, and then we came back and we finally put a nice little drive together. Had a really big play, you know, on the on the trick play right there and got the points. We, we really were looking to try to get them, draw them off sides on the short yardage right here. But we knew we wanted to get the delay game because it was a really bad angle for the kicker. That hash at the five-yard line was tight. So we, we were good to take that penalty, back him up five, give us a little bit better angle for our kicker. And, of course, he made it, and, you know, we're up 10 to zero. But, you know, we got to keep up the momentum. They get the ball to start the second half. They're doing what we thought they were going to do offensively. We felt like we were going to get downhill, power eye. You know, they've not done that. This is the first time they've showed that look to us. But we just felt like that's what we were going to get. Uh, defensively, they're doing a good job stopping some of our run stuff. we got to get a little bit better up, up front and clean some things up. All right, Coach, go ahead and be in your boys for the second half. Thank you. Yes, sir. Back to you, Tom. Back to you, Jason. Well, I think about this, Kenny. He analyzed it all. Well done, first half-wise, for the Pisgah Black Bears. Always singing the song of what might have been, those coaches, but his team certainly up front at the break. Bojangles Friday Night Rivals Halftime, brought to you by Asheville Chevrolet. Welcome back to the Asheville Chevrolet Halftime Show here on Friday Night Rivals. Joining us are the proud and long-standing supporters from the aforementioned Asheville Chevrolet. Y'all know them pretty well at this point. Bobby Roussel and Joey Roussel. Gentlemen, always a pleasure to see you both. 
Always glad to be here, Nelson. Of course, glad. of course. Good to have you back on the show, Joey. Great to be back, Nelson. Of course, since you are back, you know I got to ask you, what were your thoughts on the first half of the game? Uh, first half's pretty good. There's a lot of really good defense out there. Um, it seems like maybe Pisca's passing game is the difference setter. Right. Um, really excited to see what's going on in the second half. Okay. Now, I want to also talk about business. You know, how's business looking right now at Asheville Chevrolet? What you guys got on the lot today? Business is great. Inventory's coming in. We've got some tracks, some trailblazers rolling in. Uh, everything's looking good, even though they're on strike. We're still getting cars ready for this month to wrap up, but we're really getting ready for our big event. All right, let's talk about that big event. You know, for those who are unfamiliar, they may be hearing about it for the first time. On one hand, what is the name of this event? And furthermore, more importantly, what is the special significance of it? What can you guys it's, tell us? It's the breast cancer event because we're raising money for breast cancer for women so they can survive yeah. through breast cancer. And we're trying to raise money for the women that can't afford it so we can give them that help in hand. And that's why we sponsor Hope Chest for Women. That is terrific. Now, when and where is it going to be held? It's October 5th from 5 to 8.30 at the dealership. And we have some good prizes that you can come bid on. And I'm going to let Joey talk about those. Okay, yeah, Joey, talk about those prizes, man. Yeah, so we've got some, uh, a lot of really good silent auction items. The, ones that, the one that I'm going to highlight tonight is the uh, Tennessee-Georgia game. Uh, we're going to have sweet tickets, parking okay. passes, the whole works. It's going to be a great game. Um, Definitely well, come great out. Event, yeah. yeah, great. Yeah, great event. Uh, definitely come down and come check it out. Um, bid on that. Bid on something else. We'll have a lot of other good prizes. Um, a Chevy, I drive for. If you hashtag I drive for and post a picture on Instagram, Chevy will donate money towards the cause as well. Sounds like an outstanding event. And Bobby, from what I was told, you're going to cook up your famous jambalaya. Is that right? Absolutely. We're going to be serving free food. We're going to Ingles is providing some food, and I'm cooking jambalaya. So come by and get you some jambalaya if you never had any. It's Louisiana favorite dish. Sounds delicious. Well, gentlemen, as always, on behalf of Friday Night Rivals and the entire West North Carolina community, thank y'all so much for y'all's longstanding and proud support of high school athletics, including the Asheville Chevrolet Halftime Show. I always say this, but we truly could not do it without y'all's support. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Nelson. Back to you. We'll be back in just a moment. Friday Night Rivals Scholar Athlete, brought to you by Arby's. Welcome back to the Asheville Chevrolet Halftime Show here on Friday Night Rivals. Joining us is the Arby Scholar Athlete winner from Smoky Mountain High School, Sawyer Snyder. Sawyer, good to have you on the show, my man. Yes, sir. Congratulations on the win, too. Appreciate it. All right. Now, Sawyer, from what I understand, academically, you rock. I mean, you just possess academic exceptionalism down to the T. You're somebody with a 3.8 GPA, and you also somehow managed to take all honors courses. Is all that right? Yes, sir. So what are some of your post-high school plans? Um, I want to go into 
four year college to study uh, maybe like exercise science. Okay. Maybe become a personal trainer. Nice. So you're really big into fitness. Yes, sir. That's great. Now, you know, I got to ask you, how much do you bench right now, man? I'm at 185 right now. That's pretty good. I'm proud of you, man. Now, let's talk about your academics in terms of your preparation. You know, can you share with us some insight into how you achieve academic exceptionalism? What's the secret? Uh, I just make sure I have time to study and uh, get my work done. Okay. Now, I understand you're also a triathlete of success. That's what I'm going to call you right now because you play football, you play basketball, and what's that last one, man? Tell play, us all. Play track. And you run, or you run track run in track, this case. Track. So, FBT, I like it, man. Can you share with us some insight into your accomplishments in these three sports, including, obviously, with football kicking off? Uh, football, I started last year. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just getting the swing of things. Okay. Basketball, I was honorable mention last year, all conference. And okay. then track, my sophomore year, I was a national qualifier. Nice. And a state qualifier. Most impressive. Now, obviously, as a football player, I got to ask you the dual question. On one hand, what position do you play? But on the other hand, what are your thoughts on tonight's game? I play cornerback and uh, slot receiver. Okay. And tonight, I mean, we just got to come out here and get the job done. All righty. Well, getting the job done starts with you being the scholar athlete for the winner for the week. So here you go, my Thank man. You, Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Good luck in all your future endeavors as well. Arby's, we have the meats. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey everybody, I'm Nelson Weston. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Friday Night Rivals. Joining us today is our long-standing good friend all the way from Ingalls Markets, Melissa Lovell. Good to see you, my friend. Your football friend. It's football friend indeed. <laughs> now, Melissa, speaking of football, I want to transition from football to the classroom because you and I both know y'all have a famous program called Tools for Schools. And for those who are unfamiliar, how exactly does it operate on one hand, but on the other hand, more importantly, how do the good folks at home go about supporting it and getting involved today? Oh, Nelson, it's really a wonderful program because it's geared toward the school mm -hmm. and the needs that they have that sometimes lots of times teachers will actually end up buying out of their own pocket. Indeed. You have an Ingalls Advantage card and a, a list of schools who participate in the Ingalls Tools for School program. Mm -hmm. Link your card to one of those schools and every time you shop, you're earning dollars. At the end of the year, the school can go and purchase what items they need. Oh, that sounds like an amazing mm -hmm. and well-rounded program. Right. Now, Ingalls, y'all have provided robust support to the community for so many years now. We're talking high school athletics, college athletics, and everything in between. It does beg the fundamental question, why? Why is it so critical for y'all? Well, it's, it's not just sports, but it's also educational mm -hmm. programs. But we're the home team. Mm -hmm. Ingalls is your hometown grocery market. Mm -hmm. So you are also supporting our home teams. It's really important for us to be a part of that community. We love being part of that, and we're blessed to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Lots of those um, students work at our stores or graduated from those schools. We see these people in church. We see these people at, at work. This is a really big deal for us. Might be a big company to look at us from the outside in, but we like being beacons in our own communities. Y'all are beacons indeed. All outstanding work. And Melissa, very quickly, you and I both know no great game is complete without delicious, mouthwatering, good food. What are some of the most popular items on y'all's menu oh my goodness you have to start off with a wonderful boar's head so mm. sub just absolutely get mm. with all the trimmings great fried chicken 
all the sides you could possibly want, a wonderful salad bar, a wing bar, olive bar. I mean, I don't know if I could decide. I just have to go get a big old wheelbarrow and take it all there. Plus all the things you need, like chips and drinks and paper plates. One-stop shopping place for all your tailgating. All fantastic work in Well, Melissa, thank you so much for your time here today. Thank you, Nelson. All right. We'll be back in just a moment. Kenny, what an entertaining halftime experience here as Pisgah has welcomed in Smoky Mountain on this night. Also, an entertaining first half. You know, we had the defenses flex their muscles early. Had a little bit of trickery you'll see involved here along the way. But this is one of those defensive moments, the big pick early for Stillwell. Yeah, otherwise it beats 17 to nothing right now. And make that stop and kept them in the ball game. That was uh, one of Carter Browning's many moments defensively. Here, of course, uh, where Smoky Mountain ended up rising call, forcing that fourth down. It ended up being a Fox field goal, latest to the Foxes to make his mark here at Pisgah. Good Bunch on the 27-yarder. And then here's the trickery. All adds up to Clark connecting when all is said and done with Reynolds. That 66-yard strike is the only score of the ball game in terms of touchdowns. And here are the overall numbers. What jumps off the stat sheet at you? We have passing. <laughs> Look at that. 172 to nothing yeah, as far as the passing yards. And it has been the difference. But guys, Smoky Mountain has played really, really good defense. And it's just been uh, maybe about three pass plays. And one of them was a trick play. 66 yards later, yeah. the touchdown, the only one of the contest. By the way, Smoky Mountain about to get the football, so it'll be interesting to see if they can tighten things up a bit. Let's check in now on the Carolina Furniture Concepts Coach's Corner out of the locker room. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Kenny. This is the Coach's Corner brought to you by Carolina Furniture Concepts. Well, Coach, there were some bright spots in the first half. It does raise the question, what was the message the boys in the locker room pertaining to the second half of the game? consistency it's all about consistency for us we've got to make sure that we can put a drive together put one in the end zone here coming out to start the second half and then get a stop on defense all right good luck your team in the second half coach yes sir back to you kenny back to you jason all right thanks so much nelson and uh thank you to coach both coaches for visiting with us on the carolina furniture concepts coaches corner two of the great coaches in this game from this part of western north carolina we'll break away come back with second half action in a 10 nothing game between pisgah and Smoky Mountain.
Well, getting ready for second half actions. All right, Kenny, uh, always want to talk about adjustments when it gets to this time. You just heard the thoughts of the Smoky Mountain head man. We heard from the Pisgah head coach going to the locker room. Oh, what's in the mind of a coach right now? What adjustments do you see these two trying to make? So we, they said something about they were, Smoky was going to do something different. I wasn't sure what it was, and they hadn't run it in the eye formation and with the twins. And So they was hoping to control the football a little bit more, but I could probably see Smoky – Going back to what they've what they've done and practiced since the start of the season, and trying to get make our kids maybe feel more comfortable and uh, and go with that a little bit. They've they've got to have a little bit of trickery of their own. Uh, big key for Pisca, three and out right now. They they stop them right here and can get the ball back and go down the field and score from good field position. I don't see how Smoky Mountain can come back. Makes this an all-important first possession coming up for the Mustangs. And the return to the 30, that's about all. And they're going to spot this at the 29 uh, once he's wrestled around to the 30 or the 25-yard line. And that's where things will take over. Consequential first drive coming up here. Yeah, they didn't want to kick that ball deep and give Williams a chance to, uh, to be the athlete he is. Uh, but... We'll see. I want to make you see what the formation they come out in right off the bat. They've got two receivers coming out here, which tells me they break the huddle first and come on out. It just, you know, it's like they're going to try to go back to running the trap. They've had some success running the trap and the fullback early in the game. Keep it on the ground. Some room across the 40 in the first carry of the second half, an introduction to Isaiah McNeely, who carries the football. So McNeely, his first impact it is. of consequence. It is. And, again, if fullback took you to play, and that's what the linebackers need to read. Sometimes uh, linebackers if on one offense are supposed to read the pulling guards and the other one run the, uh, the fullback. Sometimes they can get a little confused which one they're supposed to read real quick right before the snap. Right there, right there, they, the tailback, they sent the fullback one way and just came back with the tailback the other because they know the linebackers are reading the fullback. But uh, uh, it's lots of times, too, uh, coaches will teach for you read the head of the center. If the center goes to the right, then you teach your linebackers to go downhill to the left because he, most of the time the center is blocking backside. Yeah, 99% of the time he doesn't come back. On a sweet play, he'd be reaching. And that's where you read it. Mm -hmm. A clinic, as you get to see some what Kenny Ford called at the half, some vintage mountain football between these two. And it works its way up near the 45. You know, I know you enjoy as much as anybody, and we see it right there as uh, a, a couple of players tangled up. Cutter Paulus and look like maybe Matthew Mahaffey, one of the 10th graders involved on the near side. Now, all the action happening off the ball on each of these yeah. downs right now. They're giving 100% effort, max effort at all positions. Yeah, you see number two down here at the bottom of your screen. He's like the lonesome men they used to have uh, back in the back in the day because they ain't, know what, they ain't gonna be able to get that ball to him unless they've got a, I'm sure the tailback, they could do a sweep pass. Uh, with him, but the quarterback's not going to be able to throw it out there. See what the option is on third down. Going to turn, give this instead to Damari Williams. And Williams is up near first down yard. He's going to be just shy of it, though. Fourth down and one coming. Now he's got to go for it. They, you know, to that point in the game, they set a point right here. And I'll, this this is a good, right now, good, good part of the game. This is on both sides, if Pizzi can make the stop, it's huge. If Smokey can make first down, that's huge for them. But they're still not coming this way. You see how long where the receivers are. They're just dragging those two guys out. Early third quarter lift for both sides there for the taking on a fourth and one with the ball resting right at the 50-yard stripe. And the ball is down. It would have been good enough for the first down. It appeared on the initial push. But with the ball rattling around on the turf, Pisgah indicates they have it, and it will be Black Bears football yeah, as I, Pisgah takes over. See if he was tripped right here. You see, I can't tell if that was on purpose, 
but at the last second, it looked like a defensive end stuck his leg out right here. Watch this. 10. Well, because look, I'll say it again. No, Kenny. he didn't. He did. There was enough yardage there for the first yeah. down had he been able to get to the outside. Yeah. But just as he was working his way there, ball pops loose just like that. Pisga football. And that's, again, good. Cut. The end's reading that he does read the head of that tackle. If that tackle box down, he squeezes. He's taught to squeeze that down in there and do what, uh, what had just happened. And the initial drive snuffed out as a result. A little room around the corner and inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. You can move the chains. There is our initial Hendersonville family dental first down of the third quarter. And here's how it looked. Well, Clark dual threat, you know, you think about his throwing ability and his arm, but if you're going to play quarterback at this school, if you're going to be the leader in the field general in this sport at Pisgah, you got to be able to go do both come both ways. And he's certainly capable as he shows on that run, you know, most of the teams, I'd say probably 70 percent of the seven out of ten teams, maybe eight out of the ten, they're ever going to face spread formations all season. And this type of offense, they spread formations. Hate to see it because they're going to control the ball and keep that quarterback on that sideline. And it just flusters a spread offense to have the other team go down the field on like a 14 play drive and. They, they can't get in a rhythm, that those spread offenses. Well, the other thing about the type of drive you end up with on the Pisgah side so often, and yes, the 66-yard strike, the exception, as they will sort out this penalty flag being picked up, any explanation coming as it backs up the Black Bears, is uh, they'll roll the clock to the point that your possessions now become fewer and fewer mm -hmm. as you head down the stretch in this football game, a Smoky Mountain team that may very well be needing to claw back but given few opportunities to do so. Here's another look on the penalty. I guess just flat out holding or, I don't know, because it's one of these, sometimes this game can lull officials sleep and say, man, I, I, I need to throw something. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a been while. A while. <laughs> I love the story you told earlier, several people down on the field before the game talking about how often the flag went your direction. We'll get back there. This is over the middle and it's caught. As a red zone chance is coming. Boy, that talk about threading the needle and in between the defenders. Sawyer Blue comes away with the catch. It will be a first bank red zone opportunity. And those who love three have to love this. You saw the arm strength from Clark earlier. You saw the arm accuracy from Clark here. You know, that safety rolled over to the wide side of the field. All the way over there. And uh, Brett saw that and knew he could take a shot, but that's still, that, that safety still about got over there. It is a Hendersonville family dental first down along with a First Bank red zone chance. Reminder, First Bank, 16 locations in Western North Carolina alone to serve you. First Bank red zone chance will begin with Baloo receiving the toss, and he's right around the 16-yard line when he's finally brought down. Just going to say on the penalty front a moment ago, they were talking about you on the field and how so often you were flagged for being on the field mm -hmm. as you were in the pregame earlier tonight. Now, you tell me that something simply happened with the running lane of the official on most occasions. And lots of times the flag came because the official took off down the field and I took off down the field and I'd pull up and stop and he'd run right into the back of me and there it would come out yellow flag. Generally, they reach for the flag when that <laughs> takes place. Kenny Ford walking you through this night between Pisgah. And Smoky Mountain, Jason Patterson alongside. Certainly our joy to have you with us on Bojangles Friday Night Rivals. Kenny spending his birthday with us. We won't ask him on air how many, but uh, mm. this certainly has to be among those that he's enjoyed in recent years because what you're seeing tonight, fans at home, the football he loves and grew up with, this mountain football on display between these two tonight and another methodical drive being put together here by Pisgah. And that's... That's, that's what you want to do. That's what I, you know, we had a lot of success with when I was, I was a coach. And uh, luckily, I always had somebody I could give that rock to that was pretty darn good. Clark, end zone, too much air underneath him. That's incomplete. Well, one more thing as we talk about you and your birthday, and we mentioned, and certainly you've done such great work on the air for us over the last several years. 
Haven't had a chance to say on air to you big time congratulations. You went into the North Carolina, the Western North Carolina Hall of Fame, received that honor, well deserved. And uh, it's one of the many, one of the latest that uh, have, have gone your way. And so congratulations, partner. We actually able to sit down with you. We did a, a feature that will appear on PattersonProfiles.com as uh, the November releases come out, kind of reflecting upon some of your career. But everybody reflecting on your career with the honor that came. And, um, and boy, the, the latest of, of the great accolades that went your way. Congratulations on this night. Worth mentioning the birthday night for Kenny Ford. Here's another oh, no. strong kick, but looks like this one's going to be just wide to the left side. And oh, thank you, no Jason. good. I appreciate so, that. So five thirty-seven left to go. Five thirty-nine left to go. The lead still ten, and Kenny and I back on the other side of the break. Bojangles is a proud sponsor of Friday Night Rivals. It's not just football season, it's tailgate season. Head to Bojangles and order your tailgate box today. And tailgate like a legend. It's bow time. Well, in one of the storied locations for high school football in the Carolinas. We are in Milltown. All started tonight with the whistle, the old mill whistle that uh, kicked things off. At the beginning of the evening since that time, and there it is, the old mill whistle. You said there were some stories about how that was brought over, Will, here. It really was an all-out effort by this community to preserve that piece of history. Yeah, I think I think somebody had gotten in there and gotten it and uh, found out where it, where it was and uh, uh, and got to thinking and, you know, trying to get it again. they got to have to um, – what is it they have to make it? They, they worked with the company to make sure that it could be kept. Yeah. Um, then they decided, all right, where can we put it in the stadium that it would be meaningful? Do we have enough power to make sure that it's mm -hmm. functional once it's in here? And to the delight of all the fans who have filled up this home side tonight, they have uh, been able to find the, the two minutes necessary to get the air in it to make sure – that it can blast to, to, to call to attention all those who are a part to, of the history of this Pisgah football program, and it did so tonight. And certainly a thrill for us to be a part of it. Another thing we've been a part of tonight, and that's a very physical football game. That's the latest of the big hits in this contest. Uh, you're getting an all-out effort on both sides between Smoky Mountain and Pisgah tonight. Two teams, highly regarded coming into the year, expected to be the top of the conference, and uh, they have duked it out as such tonight. Take a look at the end of this. Both sides defensively, they, they they play hard, both sides. Those kids, and that's the type of kids that are from both schools and both areas. And, you know, their past has been the same way. Both these schools have been state champions. And Smoky Mountain was Silver Webster. And, of course, uh, Pisgah, uh, 
They, they, they have multiple state championships over the years. The same type of kids. And the expectations are the same here yes, and here out for these programs, as you can see by the full house experience tonight, uh, particularly on the near side. Four and change remaining in the third quarter. This is one of those that, you know, Pisca has, you heard it from uh, the head man as he went into the locker room, right? They felt like they should have had more. That first possession that ended in the interception, the second go round when they settled for the field goal. You look up at the scoreboard now late third quarter, still just 10 the separation in Smoky Mountain, though, knowing this is another of those key drives if they're going to try to chip away. And the ball is on the ground again, but it would appear as if ball carrier was able to gather it back up this time. So crisis averted as Isaiah McNeely does have it in the end. Again, it's one of the plays where you're supposed to read the fullback, linebackers are, because the fullback takes you to play. But just to mess up their keys, uh, that's a play where the, it's a counter, you're not pulling anybody. And uh, they should pull somebody on that fullback field could fill for the guard and he could pull that was always a tough play i always i didn't like to see that when you have your linebacker reading the fullback so uh but it's been good watching the but they you know have, have run the twins huh? weaving through making his own space another carry for mcneely and he's been impressive to watch gonna come away here with the Hendersonville family dental first down, move the chains up near midfield. Suddenly the Mustangs of Smoky Mountain coming to life. Yeah, there they pull. Now they pull what we just talked about. They pull back the one way and come back over the county. That's what I said. I was always scared of that play because your linebackers have got the fly toward the fullback. That's their keys. Wait, don't you just love the way McNeely struggling down to the very end of that play for every yard available, he and his team? No like a fight in this group as they're just shy of the 50. Roll for Jones. He rolls through. His best red rover right over there, right? Broke right through and ended up into Pisgah territory. And kind of quietly, Kenny, here come the Mustangs on the march when they need it most late yeah. third quarter. How long has it been since they've been on that side of the 50? Have they? This is the run that worked them there. You know, most of the moments tonight for Smoky Mountain have been of the defensive variety. We've talked about what Stillwell and others have done defensively for this team. That's a good timeout right there. I always felt like that the team starts driving like that. You don't see it much in football like you do basketball. Basketball, they, they call timeout to break the momentum. I think more, more football coaches need to do that right there. Get it together. We'll take it as well. Back with more from Canton. Just under two to go, third period. Well, tonight's band and cheerleader spotlight brought to you by In Market. And what a night to be entertained by this band. They put together quite a show at halftime, a tribute to this community, and so much more. And what's more, this is our band and cheerleader spotlight brought to you by In Market here on Friday Night Rivals. They're pretty good. You know, this most times you don't see a lot of bands that wear the uniforms anymore. Well, and you made the comment that the pregame show was something to behold. All the pregame festivities and activities that the band certainly was a part of, the tribute to our nation with the national anthem, so much of what happened even before the football game, leading into the whistle that we have talked so much about, the mill whistle atop the scoreboard, all that. 
worth seeing. If you haven't been out to a game here at Pisgah of late, well, several opportunities left this season to do so. One of the great environments for high school football in the Carolinas. Kept over the middle by Aiden Johnson. And if you've stepped away for a moment, Smoky Mountain is on the march. And Kenny, they're a payoff at the end of this drive away if it turns into a touchdown drive from making this a field goal game once again late third. Yeah, a lot of times if I thought twins, I always like to – I'd even walk the corner up to the outside. If they're not throwing it, and you can take the linebacker and have him read it or bring the linebacker to the outside, just call it tough, and just bump the lineman down and start stopping that trap and that, that power play. You close off one – you close off a gap, and you got two linebackers for B. Uh, legendary Kenny Ford trying to make a coaching adjustment on this drive. That's going to be rushed out around – the corner, and it looks like there's going to be the corner for Jarek Jones. He is down to the 37, and that's enough to move the chains. It is a first down for Smoky Mountain as the Mustangs continue marching. And then the corner, love that defense, because if I did it with the corner, then he got to go. He got to stunt off the edge right there. And so if that defense in, either number five would have been nailed by, by the corner coming hard. So it's the corners they ever got to put. They saw twins like this. You see it on the outside. You only got two down linemen. Bump that defensive end down over the tackle and walk the corner up outside or the outside linebacker. And that closes that gap off. They did a good job by that, by themselves on that. That's getting downhill. That's what linebackers are supposed to do. I go down, went down and watched the Panthers play uh, or practice down in Wofford. And I saw the uh, linebackers doing a drill. They had trash cans set up there, and they just moved, snapped the ball, and there's three linebackers coming downhill now uh, for that. So that's the first thing. That's the first job of linebacker. Stop that running play. That's the first job. Pass plays are secondary. Mission accomplished for Carter Browning on this occasion, who was in on the stop for Pisgah. And that will bring the quarter to a close. One period of football remaining. A fresh 12 up on the clock when you return to Kent. Nothing contest as we begin the fourth period. Why not be a part of the Asheville Smiles Cosmetic and Family Dentistry Smile Cam? Plenty to smile about on this night in Milltown. One of the historic venues, one of the power programs in this part of Western North Carolina. And showing off so many things to smile about by being alive and being a part of high school football on Friday Night Rivals. Well, Nashville I didn't. Cosmetic and family dentistry smile cam. I can tell you one reason Kenny Ford is <sighs> not smiling right now, and that is uh, they just called out the numbers, didn't they, Kenny? I didn't win the 50. Just a little short. Dead well, gone. you know what you did win tonight? May not be that birthday Man. present for you, but what you won is a football game that's highly competitive into the fourth quarter. Let's talk this Smoky Mountain Drive because they find themselves on the march right now. And at the start of the fourth period, in position, should Smokey find the payoff on this drive to turn this back into a one-possession game? This is a critical sequence coming up. They've got to. They've got to, you know, it, you know, I know it's second down, but this is – they've got three downs for that. And they've been 
Uh, that last time they stopped that power play with the court, with the linebacker. I mean, with yeah, with the linebackers coming downhill. Uh, you know, I well, don't, I they Brent's not going to see the twins eye formation in probably the season. So, but I'm going to ask him about this, that. But on the other yeah. side, he's got playmakers. You have seen the ECU commit the 2021 and 2022 All Conference performer Damari Williams. We talked about the Mountain 7 Conference Player of the Year who had 2,000 rushing plus in 2021. Isaiah McNeely, who's back and has put his fingerprints on this game on more than one occasion. So the weapons are there for a Mustangs team trying to solve this Pisgah D to open the fourth period. And here's the first play from scrimmage in the fourth. It's going to be Jones coming this way. Tosses one out, hurtling a potential tackler to the 20-yard line is Lincoln Sutton. And here are the Mustangs in business as they work their way toward the red zone. Well, it's outside linebacker came up, and they, but they that means they were in a zone. And see, so, because the safety was still back. So your outside linebacker, that's a wrong read. The defensive end's responsible for the for containment right here. All night, the discussion has been, when will they, perhaps will they, what they will not. And on this occasion, it's to the skies that makes the difference. A little pass out and a first down from just outside that red zone. Here is the Mills River Family Dental first down from the 20-yard line. Just beyond it, here's some room inside. How about the aforementioned 2021 Mountain 7 Conference Player of the Year? Kenny, he rushed for 31 touchdowns. 2,084 yards in that campaign, and he has come to life in the second half here for Smoky Mountain. That's the reason you walk up somebody to the outside and make it tough to where if it bounces, then they've got containment on that right there. So I think they're more worried about the power play. There they do. Did they do it? Just yeah. one, two, three. Yep. Now you got a five man front. Now, now. First and goal. And inside the five-yard line is Aiden Johnson on the carry. Smoky Mountain in position with still over 10 and a half minutes to play to turn this into a one-possession game. With timeout being taken at the 10:36 mark, looks like an adjustment on a helmet to the far side. And play is going to resume. And here's the second down and goal from the four. Smoky Mountain looking for their first points of the night. And, and the Mustangs line, knocking on the door. Back to McNeely. And McNeely weaves through and into the end zone as it is now a 10-6 contest. The United touchdown with Smoky Mountain alive and well in the early stages of the fourth period. The defense being on that side, let a blocker get to his body. He can't do that. He's got to keep his – take him on his inside shoulder and keep his outside free. And I think once you do that, we walk – walk, Quisco walks up a out a defensive end type thing. He's not used to taking that on like a regular defense. But let's talk about on the flip side what McNeely did. And that's find enough room to find the end zone. And in doing so, has made it a one-possession game. Smoky Mountain having hung around tonight and now finding success.
Welcome back to Friday Night Rivals. Well, folks, I'm standing here on the sidelines with some of the gorgeous cheerleaders of Pisgah High School. Ladies, on behalf of Friday Night Rivals, thank y'all so much for allowing us to be here tonight. We do appreciate it. And in return, we proudly present y'all a check for $500. Kenny and Jason, back to you guys. Always a joy to be here at Pisgah. What a job they have done entertaining us tonight. And uh, taking good care of us, as always, here at Pisgah. We always find Milltown an inviting environment, an engaging environment on a Friday night. The excitement right now finding its way to the far side. That's because Smoky Mountain coming to life on the most recent drive. And with 10-10 to play, it is a 10-7 contest between these two. You know, we talked about it. You kind of looked at the schedule at the start of the year. This was one of those that this you circled it. and said, it's going to be a great contest uh, more than likely. And even with some of the personnel changes that happened since that first glance at the schedule, Smoky Mountain finding a way to use their personnel well and hang in here tonight. And now they kick it away, down just three. And this will be snatched up at the 16 and the return will take it to the 28 yard line kenny let's talk about how that last drive was paid off by smoky mountain and you got to give a lot of love to the mustangs offensive line yeah i, I, I was kept trying to see what got on the body of the defensive end and that's what's happening the smoky mountain is getting their they're getting their bodies on on pisgas and they're keeping their feet moving even if they don't get a clean one, they're they're keep moving their feet to let McNeely do make the read. Do McNeely things. Do he McNeely was a two thousand yard yeah. rusher in the Mountain Seven Conference Player of the Year in twenty one. And after being banged up, after working his way back, here he is. Finds himself in the heart of the story at the ten minute mark after he scored Smokey's only touchdown of the night. Now. The shoe on the other foot with what you talked about earlier, and that's the critical nature of getting that stop after the score mm -hmm. that Smoky Mountain is now looking it for. It is, and it's always huge, especially in a game like this. And so on both sides of the ball right now, you know, even if Pisca can just pick up the first down, that's big. Because that clock down there is ticking. And Brett don't care how he wins as far as just as long as he wins. That's, that's what he wants. But, but uh, Smoky... Coach Brindley, being a ex Pisgah ex Pisgah player, he wouldn't want anything better than beating his old school. Uh, there Coach, he comes out. Think about Coach Brindley, what he's been able to do. His team sticking around here. He, I go back to the conversation we had with the sixth year head coach of the Mustangs before the game started tonight, when we said, uh, "Got any wrinkles for us tonight? You got anything up your sleeve?" And he just kind of gave a sly wink. And his team fighting right down to the. Last nine minutes and change of this one, although this Pisgah first down, the latest of the Mills River Family Dental first downs, will allow the Black Bears to take a little more time off the clock here. Now just that same formation, the same action as this passing touchdown, the trick play, the reverse, where he came back and came out. He came out of the backfield then, too, and he wasn't picked up well at that time. If you missed it, a 66-yard touchdown strike from Clark to Reynolds on the backside of some trickery here he tosses this That's into up. the direction of Landon Pope and Pope is inside the 40 to the 39 they take it over to the Smoky Mountain side of the field and this has the potential to be for Pisgah that deflating drive on the Smoky Mountain side after the first big moment for Smoky Mountain tonight That's you can set up a new Mills River family dental first down after this play that's a I couldn't tell if he booped like there. That's almost like the old, which is part of the wing T passing play. Their favorite, the oldest pass play in the books is the, is the waggle. There's a bootleg off of it, and you got a fullback in the class and tight end dragon. Hard to cover. Visions of the early days in this battle tonight. And this is going to be Reynolds, who is trying to strive through that front line for Smoky Mountain on the right hash. He gets a yard or so, but uh, as important, we dip under eight minutes remaining now as the clock continues to roll with Pisgah on the march. Oh, to be in the mind of these two locked into a chess match down the stretch here in the fourth period. Three points to separation. It was that field goal, the 27-yarder by Walker Fox, which stands as the difference in the game right now. That came, of course, before the 66-yard touchdown 
for Pisgah that built the 10-0 lead. Smokey having just scored, and here we go. It's, uh, these two teams are back at it. A toss to Sawyer Ballou, but he's chased out to the far side after a gain of a couple. Here comes third and five as key a play as we've had in the ball game thus far coming up next. Well, I'm sure Coach Chappell's thinking, you know, I've got two plays to pick this up right here. But, you know, he's got, again, he's got the Fox kid to kick. You know, this is, he can, he can kick it from here. He was practicing the, 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 the latest second the, half. The latest of the Fox kids, right? The latest in of the Fox department. kids. Tanner earlier here as well, who kicked at your alma mater, Mars Hill. And, of course, everybody aware of uh, Nathan, who, He's in the Padres organization in AAA now on the baseball side of things. So, yeah, talented kicker in Walker Fox who got the job done earlier tonight. Here's Clark. He loaded up but was rushed out of the pocket. Now he looks as if he's going to run with it and will. He's inside the 30. A flag comes down. That may be for a horse collar, Kenny. And if it is, it's really going to put Pisgah in business. Yeah. Well, back in 47, there wasn't any such thing as a horse collar. That was good tackling. It was called tackling back then, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Here's another look at the end of the play and the play itself. Look at Clark and he made, decides to run. He made something out of nothing right there. Or is that? I was. I don't see anything well, wrong with that. I, at the very end of that, it looked like a grab of the jersey, but that is going to be the call. It is going to be that, as you said, the newfangled in many ways, right? Horse collar call. It looked like he I grabbed him see... around the jersey and brought him down. But that's going to be costly, what? tough break for Smoky Mountain as the Mills River Family Dental first down is aided by the penalty, and it marches it all the way inside to the first bank red zone down to the 14-yard line for Pisgah. He's seen That's yet. tough. And that looked like he had more by the jock strap than he did that horse call. Here goes the red zone opportunity for Pisgah. Again, the ball at the 14. And you see how things are set up for Reynolds. He takes the snap himself out of the Wildcat, goes far side. And the 14 yard line, about all that's available to Braden Reynolds. So, well, we talked about opening up the playbook on one side of things perhaps tonight. We've seen it opened up and wrinkles everywhere on both sides at times tonight. And Smoky Mountains just stayed sound and say, Coach Reynolds, he's been patient, very Certainly patient. Certainly the case. And it, it, it almost looks like a little bit there at that last drive that Smokey scored on. They bore Pisca down some. What we've seen him do is use the variety of different playmakers that are there and find a way to get the ball in their hands. On the Pisca side of things, it's been trickery in the play calling itself from time to time in different looks like the one here with Reynolds involved. And this will only be the 11-yard line that Pisgah finds this time. And here now is Smoky Mountain stiffening. And if they do hold Pisgah to the Walker Fox field goal, you know, that keeps it in the realm of a one-possession yeah, contest with five minutes plus remaining. And especially Pisgah having trouble stopping Smoky Mountain on that last drive. Easier said than done with third down coming. But the clock's going to be under five minutes by the time this next snap to Aaron Clark has been executed. Here is Clark waiting on it. And he's looking for a receiver just shy of the end zone. That would be a first down. It is, as I said, shy of the end zone, but will set up a first and goal on the connection. Boy, Clark smooth as he rolled out of the pocket. And he finds Sawyer Ballou once more. Boy, that was huge right there. Had the bootleg off of it. Uh, they, that's huge right there for them because they're now they've got – and they're not going to get any hurry, hurry score right here. The route and, was textbook for Sawyer Ballou, the throw on the money from Aaron Clark. Here's the Mills River Family Dental first down play, and they just get in behind the big bodies up front. There's the second – Piska touchdown of the night, and with 4-12 to go, you wonder, will it be the backbreaker? Will it be enough? Quite a march for Piska, and it's somewhat fitting that the guy you put on the screen as he trots away, Eli Hyman, one of those big linemen up in the front of things, helping get the job done for that front, which simply made their way into the end zone for the United touchdown. Now, there they got, they pushed Smoky Mountain around right there on that one. And here is the extra point 
from Walker Fox, whose story we told you just a moment ago is the latest Mercy. in that position. And after connecting on the 27-yard field goal earlier, he has trouble with this extra point. But it is at 16-9, which is still slightly more yeah, that's a, than Smoky Mountain can snatch away in one possession. Here's the Pisca touchdown for a little late breathing room. Well, Western Carolina University reminding you to use your advantage. A high-quality education, never more affordable. That's thanks to the NC Promise Tuition Plan. As a North Carolina resident, you pay just $500 in tuition per semester for a degree that prepares you for a thriving future for a lifetime. That's Western Carolina University, sponsors of tonight's Western Carolina Fan of the Game. 4-12 remaining schools you think about the athletes in recent history you know we talked a little bit ago about tanner nathan fox and the early field goal earlier from the latest walker fox who had the 27 yarder which you know helps create the separation that that exists now you think about the smoky mountain side of things and baseball coming down the home stretch and you can't help but think of cal raleigh mariners starting backstop uh, but it, and you we've gone deeper into history than that tonight too kenny so many storied athletes from these two programs over the years. And you look down at these two uniforms as they get ready to go at it for the final four and change. So much history comes to mind. Here's a little trickery to try to write a latest chapter. They do get it in the hands of Damari Williams, who, as we told you, is an East Carolina commit. He's going to make his mark at the next level. An all-conference performer in 2021 and 2022 for this group back to make his mark again in 2023 and Smoky Mountain short on time but uh, you know big on heart and ability they have the football back to see what happens here I know it does for you looking down at those uniforms and knowing just how much is involved in seeing those school colors and wearing those school colors for these young men yes they they take a lot of pride especially uh, both schools you know Civil Webster was orange and black <laughs> and that was a really a cool color uh, back in the late 70s. Not a bad baseball color either. We're talking about no. some of those cross connections across all sports. Loading up, looking as if he was going to do something deep with it, but then tucking it and taking it forward was Jarek Jones. And he is to the 47-yard line. It's back around the line of scrimmage, but the bigger enemy right now of the Mustangs is the fact that that clock just keeps on rolling. That's it. And um, Coach Lee reminded me of what we used to call the play, 46 47 Badger was what was hurting Pisga on that drive down the field. Uh, I don't know if they have enough time to be running it, though. Well, here's a toss trying to connect with Malachi McNeely this time around, but it is incomplete near side. Trying to get Malachi McNeely involved. Only touchdown tonight, belonging to Isaiah McNeely. Closed the score up to 10-7 just a little bit ago, but Pisgah answered with a touchdown scoring drive. 
to stretch it out to 16-7. And now they use the bell to call upon the home fans to rise to their feet for this defense ahead of third down and 10. Take a little longer to get out of the parking lot tonight. Fans sticking around in a close contest, but it's well worth it to toss far side incomplete, trying to find Lincoln Sutton over there. And now it's fourth down to 10. Two scores, 316. Got to have it time if you're Smoky Mountain. Yeah, it seemed like they panicked a little bit right there to me. Uh, his was having problems stopping that Badger play. And they didn't go back to it. They, they went to the gun. And sometimes being patient, they really had enough time. They, you know, it was, it was, it was nine to ten yards where they were ripping it down through there, and uh, with McNeely, uh, and then just just started chunking it real way too soon. I think earlier couldn't get the stop they needed after the touchdown and a, a two-score hole, even after the missed extra point. This will be right into that Pisgah front, and that's a turnover on downs with 3-11 to play in the football game, and they are starting to fill it here in Milltown. Yeah, they, Coach uh, Coach Sheppel now can go back to the trap and belly plays and things like that and just, just kind of run that clock down, just keep that thing going. Uh, it's definitely on his side now. Well, it's on his side really the start of the fourth quarter, but once it went 10-7, you know, things got a little hairy, and uh, Pisgah made Pisgah played made the plays they needed to to put this thing out of reach. Really. Now three eleven to try and salt away off of that fourth quarter game clock for Pisgah. Some of the coach is starting to come down. Everybody breathing a little easier yeah, in the press box area looser. and just below. <laughs> as they turn and give it to Reynolds. And that speaks to the fight from Smoky Mountain tonight before this thing passes us completely by. What a job by the Mustang. This is a team that's been forced to, without going into too deep detail, has been forced to make some unexpected adjustments, last minute, all kind of different things that teams have to battle through. And boy, did they do just that tonight. Mustangs battling right down to the wire in this one. But Pisgah will look to put it away after the break. Well, here is our prestige Subaru drive of the game. It was the drive in which Pisgah needed to answer the Smoky Mountain touchdown. It's the most recent Pisgah drive before this one in which the Black Bears tried to put the football game away. And Kenny, that toss down to the one yard line left it up to the big guys up front. The touchdown run capping our prestige Subaru drive of the game. Yeah, that play right there because it had been third and 10, third and 11. And Coach Chappell had to make a decision whether fourth or to go to the field goal and make it uh, 13 to 7 right after Smokey had driven it down the field on him. Did have the tough call on the horse collar there, too, which yeah, ended up was. pushing things forward a little bit, uh, aided that drive to some degree. But Pisgah, you give the credit to the Black Bears for going on the march and uh, inside three minutes now as third down and seven is coming. Timeout being taken here. Well, a lot of key football left in this conference, left in this season. You know, we talked about some of the big games that you circle, and you know what happens uh, mid-October for these guys. And 
the games that they look forward to. You know, we saw earlier tonight a number of the Tuscola players, Kenny, were in here. Some of those uh, dignitaries from the other side of that big-time Western North Carolina rivalry here watching some of the early stages of this one tonight. So they're, you know, our eyes forward to what is left on the rest of the schedule with the success you have on a night like this. There's a lot of key football left for both these programs. There is, and a lot of schools were open tonight. Yes, as they, that's the uh, reason. People do that right before the – because conference season is just starting, and, you know, they want – they want to kind of get their get ready for conference play. So, mercy, there's I'd say over half the schools in West North Carolina is off tonight. A little too much uh, underneath this, and incomplete. I'll let you preview that one for us just a little bit. Let's talk. You can't be here without talking a little bit of Pisgah Tuscola. How do you see that one this year? Well, what is not going to have any predictions, but what makes it fun? What may, well, what makes it fun? They've been going back and forth with each other. For, they're just seven miles apart. Yep. Like Rhonda Bird just said a little while ago, it's like Duke and Carolina. They're, they're just seven miles apart. And yep. the same thing here. And so uh, it breeds a little bit of contempt, but it is friendly contempt. It's a, yeah. Yeah. a passionate rivalry, to say the least. Oh, um, we yep. actually had that on the air in prior years. What a battle it is when those two get together. It'll be big, and I do believe it's at Tuscola this year. That's going to be a fun one. Make sure you keep an eye out on that contest as well. I'll tell you where we're going to be on the backside of this change of possession Ooh. in the next week, and it may not be a full change of possession. As flying in there to cover up the football and putting Pisgah in a position that they may very well now. That looks shaky able to at put the, the start. Finishing touches on it. That it belongs shaky. to Milltown. Poor Smokey. Uh, he didn't right there. He look, he just was wobbly the whole time he was running up there and trying to catch it on a run. It's hard to. Well, let's see if we can figure out exactly who ended up in there, Kenny, when all was said and done. As it looks like that uh, player who got on that was at 13, Matthew Bennett, senior. Who ended up on top of things there? It is Matthew Bennett. And there's a look at Matthew Mahaffey, who was on the sideline. What a job. Well, it, The combo of Aaron Clark along with Braden Reynolds, among others, having done tonight. What can you say about the play of the, the quarterback, Clark, and certainly Reynolds, who was his target on that 66-yard reception? It was Reynolds who set the tone. He had the kick return. He had that early play on – the, the opening drive and uh, that group inside the red zone, the first bank red zone, trying to salt things away now. But they've proven quite the one-two punch tonight yeah. for Pisca. And it, it's – Pisca had two better – I mean, they're two better than what uh, Smoky Mountain has, you know, on that side of the ball. And those two have been the difference. Both offensive lines, I thought, have done a, done a good job and done what they're supposed to do for what has been called. Both teams giving you the kind of football you want on a night like this. This is going to be carried by Sawyer Ballou, a junior whose name we've called more than once as well. Here's that punt one more time. Bless his heart. And there is, in fact, Matthew Bennett, as we suspected, covering things up when all was said and done. That's tough. That's tough sitting down. It's already tough to me just to stand there and the ball's coming straight down at you and, and trying to catch it uh, from that. But the uh, have to be when it's wobbling and on the run and uh, your eyeballs are just jumping up and down as you're trying to adjust to the ball. Uh, I always, always admired any of those punt returns. They could just reach up like neon Dion and just act like it's nothing to catch the thing. And uh, there's not many kids you see. It just feels very relaxed and just – It's a gift. To catch. Yes, it is. It's going to be given off to Reynolds, and Reynolds is met – just shy of the 10. That looks to be enough for what will be the final Mills River Family Dental first down of the night. And that will bring things to all but closure here. Reminder, we'll be with you next week on Friday Night Rivals from Christ School, Providence Day, Christ School, the showdown on the 22nd. And, of course, you get the chance to look at one of the teams ranked in the top 25 in the country and always uh, – seeing some stellar athletes at Christ School as well every time we journey there. So Providence Day, Christ School next week 
on Bojangles Friday Night Rivals. Here is the moment the Pisgah fans were waiting for. Aaron Clark able to take a knee, and the final seconds will roll off the game clock. Smoky Mountain, a valiant effort on the road tonight. The Mustangs pushing Pisgah to the brink deep into the fourth quarter, but in the end, Pisgah went on the drive they needed to, and it turns into a 16-7 win for the Black Bears as they put another one in the win column here in camp. Good football game. Good football game. It could have gone, could have changed real quick down there once it scored about 10-7, and then it beats 10-7 still, and Smokey gets the ball back. And I just I think they kind of uh, jumped the gun a little bit too much. I know it didn't seem like they were running out of time, uh, but I think I tried to hit that badger oh. play a little bit more before they started throwing it. Well, you can say this, performed very well. Took this thing into yeah. the depths of the fourth quarter with a chance right there on the verge. But in the end, Pisgah, enough playmakers, enough key plays. The, the field goal early, the 66-yarder on the connection trickery-wise, and then that long drive to salt away victory, translating into a 16-7 to win. We'll wrap this one up on the other side of the break. A win for the Black Bears of Pisgah on another Friday night in Milltown. A uh, Friday night in Milltown. It goes the way of the Pisgah Black Bears. 16-7, the final. It's time for the Bojangles Trophy presentation. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Jason. This is the Coach's Corner, brought to you by Carolina Furniture Concepts. Well, Coach, first thing is first, congratulations on a terrific win here tonight. With tonight's win, you guys go up 5-0. and How does that make you feel? Hey, just a great win for our community. I mean, you look at the people that are still here uh, great atmosphere for us tonight. I thought our kids answered the bell. I think that's the biggest thing for us. I thought they answered the bell when we got challenged. We were able to finish the game. Uh, just a great effort from them tonight. Coaches did a good job as well trying to make some changes and help our kids out, but just excited to be at home. How nice is this? Speaking of home, Coach, let's take it back home. Let's also go back in time. As you know, two years ago, tragedy struck not just the school, but this entire community. Now, in the immediate aftermath, the entire community rallied together as one. Talk to us about what that moment meant on one hand, but on the other hand, what does that mean two years later to be playing on a brand new field and emerging victorious as well? Well, the community rallied behind us. When all of that happened, we had so many schools that reached out to us. We were able to use their venues, uh, Inca High School, especially Irwin. We spent a lot of time at Irwin High School. Just the, you know, the camaraderie with the coaches and the communities and the administration to be able to let us use that and to finally get back here home, the first game here this year, you know, with Brevard game, and then now we're rolling a little bit, 5-0, and 3-0 and at home. 
you know, you couldn't ask for much more than that. All right, Coach, I think this belongs to you, so congratulations, Coach. Congratulations, Terry! <laughs> Kenny, Jason, back to you guys. The essence of what sport, of what community is about, you think about the whistle blowing to get it started and the trophy presentation for the guys representing Milltown to wrap it up. Just uh, everything you'd want out of a night like this when you come back and celebrate the resilience of this community and when you celebrate high school football, Kenny. Serves it more than, than what's going on right now. And uh, we've got to commend Coach Chapel for holding – things together through all that that you got you got COVID, you got the flood, you got to play every Thursday and Friday, you got to get on that bus and go somewhere else. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the mill has to shut down. And you know, there's parents looking for other places to uh it's to like even changing. move. My goodness. It's life changing. Yeah. So you know all this has happened in a three year time period and that that's the I, and I keep commend, commending this coaching staff and the kids here for, for on the football team because th they stayed together. And and but last year it was four and seven, and all that wore wore them down. It wore them down. But they've worked hard, and this is exactly what the football team is doing. What this team, what this community needs. Very nice night. Pretty impressive football team, an even stronger community here in Milltown. Pisgah Black Bears sixteen seven winners. Tonight, again, everything you would want when you think about what it took for these young men, for their community, for their families to work to this point. And they were impressive on this night. Bounce back season for Pisgah thus far. The P stands for perfect right now. We'll see how long it stays that way the rest of this 2023 campaign. It was a privilege to be here. Always a joy to have you with us on Bojangle Friday Night Rivals. Until next week. When Bojangles Friday Night Rivals heads to Christ School for my broadcast partner, the birthday man, Kenny Ford, Jason Patterson, on behalf of our entire crew, saying thanks for joining us tonight and enjoy the rest of your football weekend here in Milltown and beyond.